Hey, welcome back to 65 Drums. My name is Justin. Today I want to do a video about my very favorite electronic cymbals. I get a lot of people email me questions about this sort of thing. I bought this shell pack or I'm converting my acoustic set to electronic and I need to buy a set of cymbals. So I thought today I would do a video about my personal favorite electronic cymbals. The first thing I want to cover is a whole debate between metal electronic cymbals and rubber electronic cymbals. In my personal opinion, I kind of like uh, rubber cymbals more because one of the big drawing points for electronic drums is the fact that they're low volume. And that sort of goes away if you buy metal electronic cymbals. They look amazing and they do feel really nice while you're playing on them because you're actually hitting pieces of metal. But the problem for me is that they have a volume sacrifice. I prefer to go with rubber cymbals. So that's what I'm gonna be covering throughout the majority of this video. Okay, but for the people out there that are still really interested in metal electronic cymbals, if I had to choose between the different types that are available on the market, I would run out and buy the triggered low volume electronic cymbals. The ones that are like the Zildjian L80s that are full of holes. The reason why I prefer those metal electronic cymbals is the fact that they still retain the flexibility. When you hit them, your stick kind of digs into them a little bit and it's not like hitting a concrete block. One thing that I don't like very much about the solid metal electronic cymbals is the fact that they have so many layers to them. For example, if you buy some field hi-hats, you have the top acoustic cymbal and then you have a big piece of rubber underneath that and then you have another solid metal sheet uh, underneath that. So it's a three layer cymbal and that makes it even heavier than a regular acoustic cymbal would be. So it looks fantastic and it's nice to be able to play on a metal surface, but it doesn't actually bow when you hit it. There's no give to it. And that's why I prefer the triggered low volume cymbals when it comes to buying metal electronic cymbals. But now let's jump into the actual part of the video where I talk about my favorite cymbals. I'm gonna break it down into categories. So my favorite hi-hats, my favorite ride cymbals, favorite crash cymbals, and then favorite effect type cymbals. All right, let's get started. Here's my top five favorite hi-hats at the moment. This list could change in the future, but this is what I'm currently uh, liking the most. At number five, I've got the ATV 12 inch hi-hats. At number four, I've got the Roland VH 11s. At number three, I've got the Roland VH 10s. At number two, I've got the ATV 80H 14s. And then at number one, I've got the Roland VH 13s. Here's why I've ranked them in the way that I have. Starting off at the bottom of the list. I think they're all awesome, but I've ranked the ATV 12 inch ones at the bottom because of the price tag. It's $421, and at that price range, I might as well just spend a little bit more money and go for the ATV 14 inch variant. And also, it's very hard for me to even buy these. If I go to eDrum Center, I can't seem to find them. I can't find them at Sweetwater. I can't find them at Sam Ash or Guitar Center. I can only buy them from a store in Europe, and that's why I've ranked them at the bottom of the list. Even though they're excellent, I would just go and buy the 14 inch variant. Moving ahead to the number four slot, we have the excellent Roland VH11. I actually like this one slightly more than the VH10 for a couple of reasons. Number one, the bottom hi-hat controller has this bit of metal here, the VH10 does not. So this makes it feel a little bit more heavy duty. I also like the fact that it's easier to repair a VH11 because it's way easier to take it apart. I could not take apart a VH10 to fix it to save my life. Meanwhile, it's just a couple of screws on the VH11. I've actually made a video about that. So for those reasons, I actually like the VH11 a little bit more. But do I like it $100 more than the VH10? No, not really. They perform pretty much the same while you're playing them as far as triggering open and closed and all that stuff. But the VH11 is awesome. It's been on a lot of very respected drum sets and that's why it's in my top five. My guess is that Roland will eventually phase out the VH11. But that's just a guess that I have right now. It's currently still in like the Roland TD25 KVX and also the Roland TD50K. So let's move ahead to the number three slot, which is the VH10. The reason why I like this one so much is number one, it's the best $300 pair of hi-hats you can buy in the electronic drum industry. But also another thing that it has going for it is the fact that it's lighter. When I was at the unveil of the TD17 drum set line, they were talking about how they actually engineered it to be a little bit thinner, a little bit lighter, and that way it doesn't weigh down your hi-hat spring so much when you put it on your stand. So for those reasons, I think the VH10 is excellent because of its price and the way it's made and the overall tracking when you're playing it. It's a very, very fun set of hi-hats. Now moving ahead to my number two slot, I've got the ATV 80H14s. These are excellent. Quick disclaimer though, I was given these by the company ATV, so I did not pay for them. I could have some personal bias here, but I still really do like them. I play them literally every single day and I think they work great. Here's a really quick breakdown of what it's good at and some of the flaws that it has. Number one, this thing is great because it is a full 14 inches across. 
you will notice a difference jumping back and forth between a VH10 and the ATV hi-hats because of the size difference. It just feels a little bit more at home for someone who grew up playing acoustic drums. Another thing that I like about it is the fact that it's 360 triggering. We all know that hi-hats tend to spin around on an acoustic hi-hat stand, and it doesn't matter with these ATV hi-hats because they have 360 triggering. Another really cool thing about these hi-hats is that they do have a third zone. You'll probably never use it, but it's nice to know that if you take out all the different mounting hardware and put this on a cymbal stand, this could easily turn into a three zone 14 inch ride cymbal if you needed it to do that at some point. It's also nice that there are no moving parts here. It uses an electronic eye, so that might actually help it last a little bit longer than hi-hats that have some sort of moving piston inside of the controller piece. Now, as far as downsides go, there are a couple. The first is that because it's using an electronic eye, it does need to be plugged into the wall. And we all know that electronic drums already have enough cables, having one more that has to be plugged into a wall just kind of sucks. Another thing is that the bottom piece is just a plastic shell. I feel like they should have coated it in rubber or just something to make it feel slightly more premium. It's well built, but I feel like it should look a little bit nicer. And then finally, it still is expensive. $570 is way cheaper than the VH13, but $570 is still $570. But all the downsides aside, I really like these hi-hats. I think they're excellent. Let's move ahead to my top pick, which is the Roland Veeds 13s. Now these ones have been out for quite a while. I think they first came out on the Roland TD30 KV. So you can actually buy it in two configurations. You can buy the one that has that metallic silver finish on it, or you can buy the matte black version that came on the Roland uh, TD50 KVX and TD50 K drum sets. So yeah, you can buy it in two different colors and it responds beautifully. I'm not gonna try to justify the price tag here. $770 is really expensive. That's like buying two pairs of Roland Veeds 10s. Okay, so they're really, really expensive. Every time I forget why I like the hi-hat so much, I sit down and play a TD50 KVX or some sort of drum set that has the VH13s and I immediately remember how fun they are, how accurate they are, how nice and smooth the open and closed is, how well the tracking is, it's just a great pair of hi-hats. I personally have no plans on buying a Roland VH13 because of that ludicrous price tag, but still they are my favorite whenever I get a chance to sit down and use them. Okay, so let's move ahead to ride symbols. Here are my top five favorite electronic rides. The first one is just a shout out to EF Note. I really like this 20 inch ride that they made. I think it's the first ever electronic rubber ride symbol of that size but I can't really put it in my top five at the moment because it's brand new. I was probably playing a prototype and also it's a light gray color, but it's cool to see different drum companies try to make larger and larger electronic symbols. So I wanted to acknowledge them for that. But moving ahead to the actual list, at number four, I've got the ATV 16 inch ride symbol. At number three, I've got the Roland CY16RT. And number two, I've got ATV's 18 inch ride symbol. And at number one, I've got the Roland CY18DR. Like many of you guys, I remember when the biggest ride symbol you could buy was like 15 inches across or something. Now we have actual legitimately sized electronic ride symbols that are made of rubber, and that is great to see. So let's go through the list and I'll talk about why I've ranked them in the way that I have. So at number four, the ATV 16 inch ride symbol. This is an excellent ride symbol. I really, really like it. The reason why I have it at the bottom of the list is mostly because of pricing. I love the fact that it's a really thin symbol. It'll work with most modules. I like the fact that it's got 360 triggering. It's a clean look to it, but it's $500 for a 16 inch ride symbol. I think that's a bit much. It's still excellent though, and that's why it's in my top list. In third place, I've got the Roland CY16RT. This one is significantly cheaper. It's the same size as the ATV 16 inch ride, but it's $350 versus $500. What I like about this new Roland symbol, and it is the newest symbol on the list, is the fact that it's very, very thin and flexible. You can actually take it in your bare hands and flex it. It is really, really nice. I think Roland said it was like 40% thinner than some of their older symbols, and it performs great. I got a chance to play it on a Roland VAD 506 drum set, and I really, really like it. Okay, so moving ahead to my second pick, we have the ATV 18 inch ride symbol. I bought this symbol about a year ago, and I've been loving it ever since. It replaced a Roland CY15R that I had on the drum set, and that looked fine on a TD30K, but when I was using that CY15 on a big acoustic sized electronic drum set, it just looked out of place. It looked odd. You guys talked about that in the comments and I listened and I'm like, okay, fine, I'll go buy a bigger one. So I bought the ATV one and I've been loving it ever since. This is a fantastic ride symbol that triggers beautifully. Here's what it does right. It's a very thin symbol, it's got 360 triggering and it will work with most modules out there. There is no proprietary three modules that it works with. It'll work with an Elisa Strike. 
It'll work with like nearly any sort of Roland module ever made. It'll work with Tubox. It'll work with the Pearl Mimic. It'll work with ATV's modules. Really the only downside that I can think of is the price tag. $550 is very, very expensive. So yeah, it's the most expensive ride on this list. Overall, the ride symbol is fantastic and I would recommend it to nearly anybody. Okay, let's move ahead to my final pick. This is my number one favorite ride symbol in the industry at the moment, and that is the Roland CY18. This is their digital ride symbol. The reason why I like this so much is that it's just doing a lot of things right. I like the fact that it's very thin, like the ATV one. It's actually cheaper, almost by 100 bucks. It's $470. I like the fact that you only have to use one cable. I really like the rubber texture on it. I like how sensitive the bell is and just the whole symbol. Of course, it's only triggering the front half of it, but ride symbols don't really spin that much, so it doesn't really matter. Overall, it just triggers incredibly well. It's very, very sensitive. It's very, very thin. It's cheaper than the ATV one. And also, you can mute it by either pinching the edge or just resting your hand on the top of the symbol. It senses the static electricity in your hand. I just love this symbol. It's fun every single time I play it and I love how sensitive the symbol is. And because of all that, it is my number one pick as far as electronic ride symbols go. As far as downsides though, it does have a few notable ones. Number one, it's still expensive. Just because it's cheaper than ATV doesn't mean it itself isn't expensive. It's an expensive ride symbol at $470. Also, because it's using a USB cable, that means it will only work at the moment with the TD50 module and the TD27. So if you have either one of those modules, run out and buy this. Otherwise, you can't even use it, even if you wanted to. The second downside is the fact that if the cable breaks, you can't just replace a quarter inch cable and call it a day. I think you'll probably end up uh, like mailing it to Roland and get them to fix it for you. So that is a significant downside. The fact that the cable is literally attached to the symbol itself, and if something goes wrong with that, there's no easy replacement. But aside from the negatives, it is absolutely my favorite electronic ride symbol. I think it's fantastic. I always have a great time while I'm playing it. By the way, in case you didn't already see this video, I made a really in-depth versus video between the Roland CY18 and also ATV's 18-inch ride symbol. I play them both side by side with a TD30 module and a TD50 module, go through all the pros and cons if you want like a deep dive on this topic. I also made a versus video between the Roland VH10 and the VH11. All right, let's move ahead to the next category. Okay, so moving ahead to crash symbols, I'm not gonna spend very much time on this category, to be honest, because it's basically the ride symbol category, but you don't need all the three zones. But if I had to choose some crash symbols right off the top of my head, I would buy the Roland CY16RT and then the 14 inch variant for the drum set. Uh, maybe a Roland CY15 and then a couple of CY16s, something like that. I like how flexible those crash symbols are. It's not something that it is in your face. It's not crazy wobbly, but it is nice to have that little bit of an edge of a thinner symbol that also has some flex to it. And that's why I'll put them a little bit above some of the other options out there in the market. Okay, so moving ahead to the splash symbols category, I feel like ATV owns this one because they're the only company that makes premium splash symbols. It might be a funny phrase to say, but really, there are a lot of companies that make small electronic symbols, but they tend to be on their cheap drum sets. You know, like their $300 sets, their $500 sets, their $800 drum sets. And they're small just because they're trying to save money, not because they decided to make something premium and small at the same time. ATV currently has two splash symbols, a 10 inch one and a 12 inch one. And to the best of my knowledge, they're both three zone symbols. So if you've ever wanted a 10 inch splash symbol with a bell zone, now you've got one. When it comes to China symbols, there really aren't that many options out there. Off the top of my head, I can think of Trigra, and then there's also ATV with their 17 inch China symbol, which I have gotten a chance to play. And I like that one very much. If I ever bought one, I would turn it into a one zone symbol because I found that the line between where I thought the edge and the bow would be and where it actually is as far as triggering goes is a little bit fuzzy. So I would just turn it into a basically a one zone China symbol with a certain sound. And I really, really do like it. It's nice to have it. It just spices up your drum set. I realize that some people think that having a China symbol or an effect symbol doesn't really matter. And in the grand scheme of things, it is an electronic drum set. It doesn't technically matter. But if it really didn't matter, we would still be using the triangle pads for symbol pads. But for some reason, we've decided that circle rubber pads are better because it just makes sense in our head, even though it doesn't make sense in real life. And then finally, moving ahead to the last category, we have the ozone style crash symbols. Basically an effect symbol that has large holes cut into it with an acoustic symbol that would give it faster attack. 
When it comes to electronic cymbals, it just helps you differentiate it and makes your drum set look a little bit more interesting. I really, really like this one from ATV. And again, I think they own this category. I think there might be one other company I've seen do something like this. I think they were from uh, like Argentina or something, but I haven't gotten a chance to play that cymbal. So in my opinion, I like the ATV one because it's the only one that I've played. Let's talk about the just coolest looking electronic cymbals ever made. So as far as rubber cymbals first, I really, really liked the way the Roland TD30 KV cymbals looked. I thought they looked fantastic. I liked the dark metallic gray look that they went with. A little bit better looking, actually, in my opinion, than the TD20 SX cymbals. Those looked great in photos, but in person, they didn't give quite as cool of an impression as the TD30 KV cymbals. I loved the way these looked, and I wish they still made these. But the problem that made them walk away from this design was the fact that the finish eventually wears off. And that's just not a good look on a $7,000 drum set. So they went back to matte black. The Elisa Strike Pro was going to have these types of cymbals. There was a prototype of the Elisa Strike and they were showing this off. I think Kraft Music has a video on this. And those cymbals looked amazing in the photos and also in real life. But probably for the same reason as Roland, they walked away from that design. But still, as far as pure looks go, the metallic cymbal look is the best, in my opinion. Now, when it comes to the coolest looking metal electronic cymbals, the two biggest contenders, in my opinion, are Field and Jobecki. I've kind of flip-flops between liking the Field Raw series and also the Field Brilliant series. Both of those cymbals look freaking amazing. And again, everybody has different tastes on what kind of cymbals look the coolest, but those are my two favorite. Field and Jobecki make incredible looking metal electronic cymbals. Let me know what are your favorite hi-hats, ride cymbals, and crash cymbals down in the comments below. Have an amazing day. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end, and I'll see you all in a few.